Welcome, Julian. So, yeah, thanks, uh, Mihai. Um, so, I already introduced myself to the audience, but uh, to the people uh, on the Facebook uh, live feed. Uh, I'm Julian, I'm the CEO of Corbett. Okay, so this interview uh, really, it's, it's going to be uh, separated into three parts. So first we're going to find out about the story of Corbett. Uh, we're going to uh, find out about how you put together this amazing team of uh, software engineers and machine learning engineers. Then we're going to talk a bit about the technology behind Corbett because I'm sure, uh, you know, the more uh, technical guys in the room uh, would love to find out a bit more about that. And last, we'll talk a bit about the actual machine learning course, okay? Let's, let's start from the beginning, actually. What is Corbett and why should we care about Corbett? Corbett, sorry. <laughs> right, um, so Corbett is a, an uh, edtech startup. Um, started about two and a half years ago. Um, and Corby is this intelligent tutor that we're developing. So an, an intelligent tutor is really a personalized, interactive tutor um, that sits with students and teaches them one-on-one -on -one through conversations and problem-solving activities. So that, that's really the short answer of what is an interactive tutor. Um, obviously, the easy way is to just go and try, try it. Most people have never seen one. Um, okay, so it's, it's an interactive tutor that is going to help teach you a, a particular course. So, um, how, how is this different? Because I, I know we have online courses right now. How is this different than, for example, platforms like uh, Udemy or Coursera? Because I, I'm guessing, you know, you, you learn online as well. So, what's the difference? That's a, that's a great question, and actually a question we get all the time. Um, what's the difference between Corby and online courses? And the truth is, it's a completely different way of learning. So in online courses, you get video after video, and you're supposed to just absorb that material. Um, it's no different than a teacher uh, preaching inside a classroom the same material over and over again and expecting students to absorb it passively. It's like you're, you're kind of assuming the student's mind is a sponge and it just needs to be filled with water and other stuff, and they would just absorb it. And, uh, and that's just not how we learn. And so an intelligent tutor is really like going beyond that and trying to make everything very interactive and very personalized. So Corby will give students questions and solve them one-on-one -on -one with the students. You'll get a question, you try to solve it. If you get stuck, Corby will give you hints, will give you feedback, will try to help you. And the more you work with Corby, the more she can personalize the whole experience. She learns more about you as a student every, every interaction you have. Um, and that just optimizes your learning in a way that you know, videos can never do. So it, it, it's a much more interactive way of learning, right? It's not just a video. You take that knowledge from the video, but then you have um, you you have all these interactions that happen afterwards. So I, my experience with on, on, online learning, I, I love online learning. Uh, I'm a big fan. I actually learned how to code uh, online. But I found that uh, a lot of times I would just watch these videos and maybe like a month later, I would completely forget the, the material, you know? Watching the videos, I was like, I got this. I know what, what, what this means. Um, but a bit later on, it would just seem to, to vanish. So I, I, I see what you mean when, when you're talking about interactions. There is a lot of like studies on online learning and people know that it's not as effective as we would like it to be because it's all passive and unpersonalized. Yeah, I, I think from my experience with uh, learning to code, uh, it was really the, the idea of putting it into practice and actually using that knowledge to create uh, programs and, and, and develop apps. That, that's really what helped me uh, you know, score a job as, as, a, as a developer. So you show them what you program, Absolutely. not the certificate. Exactly. And you know it's the programming, not the videos. And exactly. that's, I think that's a typical example. And this works great for programming courses. Uh, but how would it work for chemistry or biology or history or social science? Like you can't program in those fields. So how do you get this? Like how do you internalize? How do you get the deeper understanding? How do you work through the material? Uh, in most cases, the answer is there's no way online to do it. Um, okay, so we have this personalized interactive tutor. 
It's going to help us study. What's, what's the end goal of Corbett? Right now, we just launched this uh, machine learning course. It's the first course that we put together. Uh, where do you see Corbett in the next 10 years, and what's the end goal? So we're hoping that you know, Corbett is going to be the next generation of online learning. You know, forget about like videos, uh, video platforms, essentially, and start learning interactively with AI tutors that are always with you, always personalizing the content, uh, always giving you problems, activities to solve one-on-one. -on -one. That's really the future where we're going, and we hope that in a couple of years, maybe five, maybe ten years, millions of people will be learning this way. And, and suddenly, uh, these will be people who never before had access to university education. Maybe they couldn't afford it, maybe they grew up in a country where it's just not available, but these would be people who now can afford it, and now these, because the learning is so much better, these certificates mean something, and it's able to help their personal life to drive their socioeconomic uh, status. All right, that's that's so, so, so that's that's really, I think just to summarize it, yeah. um, it's really, really to democratize education because these tutors are really low cost. They're, most of it is automated, and so it's really a different way of of delivering um, of delivering education. So I think. You know, um, MOOCs try to uh, democratize education and they've done a great job. They've moved really far, but what they have democratized is the access to content. Now, everybody can enroll and watch videos, but that's not the same as getting an education. Now, AI tutors are actually going to take the next step and democratize the education itself, not just the content. So, and that's, that's really our mission. That's where we're going, and, and we're doing, me, you, and everyone else on the corporate team are going to work on this until we get there. That's uh, when I met Julian. Uh, he talked about this idea of the mission of the company of democratizing education, and that's really what, uh, what resonated with me. That's one of the reasons why I joined uh, the company. So that sounds fantastic. Let's take a step back and talk a bit about how uh, this idea started. How did Corbett start? Um, so I, I think for me personally, I'll, I'll just tell my story. There are other founders in the company, um, but since we're sitting here, I'll, I'll tell my story. Um, maybe uh, 10 years ago, I was working in a nonprofit, an NGO, which worked in education and developing schools and training teachers in developing countries. Uh, and, and that was really like education in many countries is really the foundation of society. It's, it's really the thing that drives a lot of social development. And so I really became really conscious of its impact in society, both on healthcare, uh, climate change, um, you know, a, a lot of societal issues can be tracked to like ignorance and lack of education. And so for me, education has already always been very important. Um, but really, I think the story like, of Corbett started uh, two years ago when uh, I've been doing my PhD at the Mila. I've been a PhD student there five years working on dialogue systems. So systems like uh, Siri, like Google Now, systems that talk to people, try to understand and help them in their daily life. And then I got together with uh, Katrina Kotmar, who is um, a researcher at Cambridge University, and she's been working, I think, half a decade, maybe more, uh, on applying machine learning to education. Mm -hmm. They have a great project on teaching language learning, uh, teaching English writing skills to people. And so we got together, uh, together with Ansona, who's a former teacher, and we started brainstorming on how can this new technology that's, you know, it's, it's, you know, the technological progress is accelerating massively, how can we take it and use it to advance education, which is so important to our society. Um, and so one and a half year ago, we got funding. Um, fortunately, it's not on the slide deck, but we were funded by actually Real Ventures, one of the VCs, investor companies in this building. We are funded by two California VCs as well. Uh, and then that really took off. We had a very small demo, we got funding, and then we put together a team of machine learning engineers um, and software engineers, and then we really started building it. And so over the last year, we've been around universities in Montreal, uh, even in India, we had a couple, and we've tried it out with 200 students. I think there is a picture here on the slide, um, obviously the Facebook Live people can see it, but there is a picture of us testing it in a classroom, students. And so we really went out again and again, trying it out, always trying to put the student first. How can we build not just uh, fancy technology, but technology that actually works to teach better and to motivate students? Yeah, you should tell me to like be shorter, I guess. <laughs> that sounds great. So, in a, in a nutshell, uh, you really sold the idea to investors, really uh, based on this mission of democratizing education, right? Because, from my understanding, it was a very, uh, you know, unsophisticated demo. Yeah, it was a really, um, it was really dumb. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how else. Uh, it, it was actually a global warming demo where people could answer questions about global warming. Obviously, people should know about global warming, so we built a global warming demo. 
Um, but and that was part of it. The other part was actually Yasha's support. So I've worked with Yasha for five years now. We published, I mean, a dozen or maybe two dozen papers and conferences. And he went actually, uh, he went out and, and talked to some of these investors and put in really good word, like, hey, you should, you know, speak to Julian. Uh, you know, he's a really good researcher with a vision, and if you give him some money, uh, maybe something big could happen. Uh, so I think that's a big part of it too. It's not just me having a dream; it's also other people vouching for me. That was my final question. How did, how did you manage to get these advisors? But I guess we'll, we'll move along. So uh, to conclude this first section about the story of Corbett, so we, we talked about uh, you know how it got started, and we talked about how he assembles this team of amazing engineers, uh, the big goal of the future. But what can we expect uh, in the upcoming months? What's our plan? So we just released the first machine learning course powered by Machine Learning Tutor. This is really the first one in the world. If you go anywhere else, it's either videos or programming tutorials. Uh, and we hope lots of people, probably thousands of people, enroll and try it out. Uh, and by the way, with every new student enrolling, uh, it's fed back into the tutor, into the machine learning system, which retrains itself and gets better and better. So when you start studying, you're indirectly helping other students to learn better. Uh, and that's why I was actually saying like 10 minutes early, I think go and share it with your friends. The more people use it, and I, not just the better for our startup and for us to build the course, but the better for the system and the better for future students to use it. And so that's really what we're doing. We're building this uh, machine learning course. It's online now, but it's going to get better and better. And the next step is we need to build a lot more courses to have not just machine learning courses, but to have courses in all the science and social sciences and humanities. There's so many things that can be taught with interactive personalized learning. We're just scratching the surface here. So we're really building a platform where teachers from around the world can create courses and then students from around the world can enroll and study. And that's really how we want to change education.